Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for joining me. In this series of videos, we are going to take a look at determining overcurrent devices for different transformer installations. This will be a four-part series that covers all the general rules for calculating transformer overcurrent devices in the 23rd edition of the 2015 Canadian Electrical Code. Uh, the first that we're going to start with here is our over 750 volt transformer. So our high voltage transformer on the primary. Uh, and this does not matter whether it's a dry type or an other than dry type. We'll call it a liquid filled. This is not specific to either or. This applies to both. So anything over 750 volts, this is where we're going to be dealing with 26252 as our code rule for reference. Okay, so we have a 200 kVA transformer, 4160 step down to 600 volts. And again, take note, it is a three phase transformer. Previous videos we talked about what we do with three phase calculation. We'll deal with it in here as well. Uh, we have a 5% IZ on this transformer, especially when we're dealing with our high voltage transformers. We need to be cognizant of that percent IZ because it's gonna help us determine our overcurrents. So. As always, we need to figure out what is our primary rated current, what is our secondary rated current, but let's look at our first situation. What we're going to have is our primary feeder protection. So we'll call that primary feeder. Okay? And we're not going to worry about calculating that in this first step of this video. We are only going to look at what happens if we have primary protection only on our transformer. Okay, we'll look at calculating that primary feeder after when we get to our, our next uh, situation here. So, first thing we need to figure out, what is the primary rated current on our transformer? As always, we're going to take our KVA, in this case, 200,000 VA divided by my line voltage of 4160 times root 3, because this is a three-phase transformer gives me a rated primary current of, we should see around 27.8 amps. Okay, so 26252 sub rule one tells me if we have primary protection to our transformer only, we are going to take that number and we're gonna multiply it by 1.5 because what it tells me is that it shall be set at not more than 150% of rated primary current, which in this case 27.8, times 1.5 gives me a rated value of 41.6 amps in the case of a fuse. Okay, if we are dealing with a breaker, if we were to replace this fuse with a breaker instead, we would use a different number. We would use times 3 or 300% would give me a rated value of 83.4 amps. Now, this is where we would go to table 13 and we would select our overcurrent device. However, we need to continue reading on in 26252 because there is an exception. It tells me that if 150% of rated current does not correspond to a standard fuse rating, we are allowed to go up to the next available size from table 13. So what that tells me is if I end up with 41.6, I'm allowed to go up to a 45 amp fuse and that is specific to the fuse. Okay, there is no exception to the rule when it comes to the breaker. So once we calculate that 300% of our rated primary current, we shall not exceed that value. So if I end up at 83.4, I must go down at table 13 and choose an 80, oops, sorry, 80 amp breaker. Okay, so when we are dealing with primary protection only, I need to keep in mind, if it is a fuse, I'm allowed to go up at that 150%. I'm allowed to go up at table 13. If it's a breaker, I must go down. Okay, so this is only primary protection. There is no secondary protection. It tells me that if I have a load fed off the secondary, my primary protection will adequately protect the secondary of my transformer. Um, and we don't need to worry about the primary feeder because that would be sized independently in this case. What we're going to worry about next, though, is what happens if we want to omit this primary protection. And we're allowed to do that, but under very special conditions. So if I wanted to get rid of 
this primary protection. I still have to have some type of disconnecting means. So maybe we have an unfused disconnect in there still disconnects my transformer. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we have omitted primary protection in our transformer. All right, so 26254 sub rule three and four tell me it's not necessary to have primary protection as long as we have secondary protection rated at values calculated from table 50 as well as primary feeder protection calculated as well from table 50 values. Okay, so what we're gonna do first of all, we need to know, we've already calculated that our primary rated current is 27.8 amps because we will still need, to, still need to know that number. Okay, we need to figure out what our secondary rated current is as well. So we have again, we have our 200,000 VA. Okay, this is our I secondary divided by our secondary line voltage of 600 times root 3 gives me a rated secondary current of, we should see somewhere around 192.5 amps rated on the secondary. Okay, so what we're going to do is take this information, we're going to go to table 50 and we're going to look at table 50 and it says on the primary over 750 volts, we need to be aware what is the percent IZ. Because if you look at the first row on table 50, it tells me for under 7.5% IZ, those are my multipliers. This is what we're determining is what the multipliers are. So I go along, if I look, I have two multipliers, one for a fuse, one for a breaker. So what we're looking at right now is calculating, actually let's do, sorry, let's do our, our secondary protection here. Okay, so table 50, if we go to the far right hand side of table 50 in that same row, dealing with 7.5% IZ or less, we know that it doesn't matter if it's a fuse or a breaker, my 600 volts is under 750. Those are my choices for secondary is over 750 or under 750 volts. If I'm under 750 volts, it doesn't matter if it's a fuse or a breaker, my multiplier is 250%, okay? Sub rules three and four tell me that I cannot exceed 250% according to table 50 of the rated secondary current. So we end up 192.5 times 250% or 2.5 gives me a maximum rated value of my overcurrent of 481.25 amps. And because the rule tells me that I cannot exceed that value and there's no exceptions, I must go down. So we're gonna go table 13 and we're gonna go down and select a 450 amp. I'm just gonna call it an overcurrent. Cause as I mentioned, there is no distinction, it just says for fuse or breaker in table 50, use 250%. So we know that if I want to omit this primary overcurrent protection, this fuse has to be maximum 450 amps. That will protect us against overload currents, right? When we talk about short circuit currents, that's where we're gonna to look to our primary feeder for that protection, okay? So if we are back at table 50, 7.5% impedance or less, and we're over 750 volts, we're gonna look for our multiplier, okay? So we have, two, sorry, 27.8 is my rate of primary current, and it tells me that I must have a value that does not exceed, if we're talking about a fuse, first of all, we're gonna not exceed 300% of that rate of primary current. So 27.8 times 300% gives me 83, oh sorry, 83, let's just get rid of that. 83.4 amps, okay? And again, the rule tells me I cannot exceed, there's no exception to that. So we're gonna go down, table 13, we'll go down, we'll choose an 80 amp fuse, okay? So if I was to protect the primary feeder with a fuse, I would end up choosing an 80 amp. That would allow me to omit this primary protection here. Okay, if I was to go with a breaker, my multiplier according to table 50 again is now 600% because I'm using a breaker. So 27.8 times six or 600% gives me a maximum rated value of 166.8 amps 
And again, the rules tell me that I shall not exceed this rated value or 600% of the rated value. So we go table 13 and we select a 150 amp overcurrent. In this case, if this was a breaker, it would be a 150 amp breaker. And if it was a fuse, we would be looking at an 80 amp fuse. Either one of those combined with this 450 amp secondary protection would allow me to omit primary overcurrent. Okay, so again, because I'm omitting primary overcurrent, I must select my primary feeder overcurrent based off the values in table 50. And I must have a secondary overcurrent that is selected based off the values in table 50 as well. Okay, so in the next video, what we'll take a look at is a dry type transformer under 750 volts and we'll calculate kind of both scenarios again, primary feeder, um, if this is omitted with secondary and then just primary protection only. So hopefully this has helped and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.